Hey there, it's Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan, and we're looking at a 1992 Honda Acti K truck. Maybe the Acti is my favorite K truck out of all of them. Many of them are very, very similar to one another. Uh, this one here is 77,000 original kilometers on it. And thank you, Honda, for not having a five digit odometer for your Acti, even in 1992. So now we know that it is not rolled over at 100,000. There's just a zero there for now. Many K trucks weren't expected to be driven past 100,000 kilometers in the olden days. Many cars, in fact, weren't. So up until the 80s, many cars just came with a five digit odometer. And then people were like, wow, these cars can go to like 200 or 300,000 kilometers. And so we need that extra one there. There are some cars that can go a million. Um, Anyway, this is going to be a post-purchase inspection video. This one here was bought from a Canadian to send over to Canada through our auction purchase service. And so he did all the searching for the vehicle. We did the bidding. We bought it. We bring it in here. Take a look at the car. Ship it over to Canada. Pretty easy process. Okay, so here's the sheet. This is the information given to us from the auction. And I'd say that this auction sheet was fairly uh, accurately represented uh, by the auction. Um the condition matches the sheet, basically. So it's a 92, and I'm just gonna translate this for you, a 92 Acti truck, SDX four-wheel drive. The Actis are full-time four-wheel drive, and so you don't have to switch anything in order to get into four-wheel drive. You don't have a transfer case switch over that is going to have troubles. Um, the four-wheel drive being on all the time can be helpful to some people. And I find that this four-wheel drive tends to be fairly uh, reliable. I haven't had any issues of four-wheel drives failing more so than the other trucks, uh, which is something you'd be worried about for a real-time four-wheel drive. Okay, so the sales points here. Oh, I don't remember where I just left off. So 77, 185 kilometers, five-speed manual AC. The AC, according to this, doesn't work, which is true. It's just not cold. Probably a, a gas leak somewhere. And then 3.5C sales points now. Four-wheel drive and kilometers around 100,000 which is selling it a little bit short because it's well below 100,000 kilometers. That's 25, yeah, 30 years, whoa. So 32 years, only 77,000 original kilometers. And then the report here, seat cigarette burn, which is a minor one, I'll point it out. Antenna's broken, which is true. The antenna is all here, but the section that you pull up out of here has broken off. Interior scratched, wear and dirty. AC doesn't work, bed scratches, dents, and surface rust, and there's actually a lot of chips in the bed, but there's nothing serious in there. Once you sand it all down and you repaint it, it's gonna look good. There's not big dents, there's no areas of mushy corrosion in the bed, uh, which is unfortunately pretty common on these really old K trucks, especially like we send a lot of these to the USA for the 25 year rule. You can see the bed here, lots of chips, no serious damage. And uh, I've checked even this part here that looks like it might be serious. All of this is, is very firm, made out of a metal that's strong enough that it's not uh, crumbly or anything. I feel like especially around the mid 90s or like early 90s maybe, these K trucks are started to be made out of better materials. Okay, and the various scratches, dents, and not glossy sections, which is true, and another K car thing. It's funny that I just started talking about how they were made out of better materials. Unfortunately, the paint doesn't last a good 25 years most of the time. A lot of these are just parked outdoors, and so the glossiness goes away, and there you can see it. Um, you can do something to get the glossiness back into the paint. You can use products to do that. To make it completely glossy, it'll need a repaint, but these K-Trex will get so much attention or be so useful, whichever one you are going for, no matter if it has shiny paint or not. You can see on the roof there's still uh, still shining a fair amount there. Okay, that's all um, for the, the report section. The diagram section says A2 scratches, so medium scratches on the front bumper. A medium scratch and dent on the door over here. A U2 on the roof. And an A2S1, which is medium scratch and a little bit of rust here. Okay. So let's go for a tour around it. And I'd say that all of those damages are maybe a little bit less so than you would expect, which is good to see. I love it when the auction inspector is like, oh, these damages are a little bit uh, harsh. And then you get the vehicle only to find out that it's not as bad as you thought. 
Okay, the oil and the coolant have been checked. By the way, this is a mid-engine vehicle. Uh, the mid-engine is another good part about this. Uh, it's a mid-rear, where compared to like the high jet and the carry is a front engine. Uh, this matters for your traction. The K trucks have rather small tires on them, and as a result, it can be difficult to get traction even with four-wheel drive. Having the engine right here, so the Subarus, the engine is right here, the Actis, the engine is here, and for all the other ones, the engine is basically right here over the front axle. But you already have some weight over the front axle, but you don't have any over the rear. And as such, you don't get a lot of traction unless there's stuff in the back. If you have the engine here, this gives you a better weight distribution between the front and the rear. And it's not like it's gonna give you a better like driving experience, but if traction is the name of the game, the Acti, I think, gives you good traction as a result of the layout that they decided to go with. Uh, the only downside is that if you wanna open your hood to take a look at your engine, it's right in the bed. <laughs> so here's how you do your maintenance, which can't be done if you have stuff stuck in the back or you just don't wanna unload it. As with all of these K trucks, they have the triple, uh, triple sides. Um, so you can flip down the sides or the back. I mentioned this in all of the videos because this is why people buy these. Let me just get this out of the way. There we go. Yeah. That makes uh, anything like agricultural work, so farm work or even uh, hunting work, um, hunting work, hunting recreation. Uh, makes it a lot easier because you don't have to lift things so high to get in and um, Super easy if you need higher bed sides what a lot of people in Japan do is they get these boards That just go up here and then they load it all up. And these can carry about 500 kilograms They're rated for 350 for registration, but they can carry 500 fairly easily And of course both sides and the back all go down way more efficient than your American truck, which is ridiculous, honestly, where the back is so high up and the tailgate is really high. So if you want to just throw something in the back of this, you can almost like out of your pocket, put something in. Not like you're going to do that, but just as, as a reference. Whereas there's no way you're going to be doing that unless you're nine feet tall in an American truck. Um, so yeah plus better fuel efficiency, and they're not that expensive to buy in the first place, and everyone in Japan has them. And Japan does good things. Okay, so condition here. Our sticker is missing a little bit here. We've got a few scuffs here. This is the A2 that they were mentioning, uh, the AU2. The U2 on the roof, this is all I could really find, is this one here. So that's more like a U1. It uses like a tape, uh, like a grip tape that's been put on here. Uh, it's peeled off and not the best. And then plenty, plenty of scratches here. I recommend you get like a, a hand polisher and change over to like a, one of those like high, high intensity um, sanders and just sand it all out and then repaint it. It'll be good for a good long time. If you leave it like this, it's still probably good for another five years or so. But while it's uh, not too far gone, it'd probably be a good idea to get it taken care of. Of course, I have seen people just paint over this, which is fine too, but not as good. You'll still see the texture of the damage. Lots of chips here. Yes, these are work trucks. They get used for work, and as such, they get chipped up. Okay, going to the interior, I recommend people be 5'10 or shorter uh, to fit into a K-truck um, comfortably. To fit into a K-truck uncomfortably, you can probably do it up to a little bit more than six feet, but you're gonna be pretty cramped. But then again, people who are taller like that get cramped in a lot of cars, so this isn't a new thing for them. It has some uh, discoloration in the door card here. You can see the original door card color here, so that either can be painted or just left as is. And as is typical on many K-trucks, it has some scratches in this area here and here as people enter and exit the vehicle and will wipe off some of that paint over time. Now, not mentioned on the auction sheet, I've got to show you this. This one is soft and mushy. It needs to be ground down and then body fillered at the very least. It looks like someone already kind of did that here. Okay, so that's one of the more serious parts of the car. And uh, before I forget, there has been a repair done here, but the paint doesn't match exactly between this glossy repaired section and the rest. There are three places on the car that are like that here. 
here. And here. And yeah, they have like uh, just taped off lines of where they're going to stop the paint. And you can see the body filler was used. Not a super well done repair. Back to the interior. So no power steering. It does have power brakes. It does have AC, but it doesn't work. Uh, steering is nice and light. It's not really a big problem. The seat has a cigarette burn in it, just like the auction sheet said, but no rips, which is kind of rare for a kit truck of this vintage. Here's the cigarette burn. It doesn't go all the way through the fabric. The seats are a little on the dirty side, but compared to your average K truck, again, not that dirty. And then they have rubber floor mats, so easy to hose out if you need to. And they don't accumulate a smell uh, if you, like, have any reason to get a stinky truck. Like, a uh, cigarette smell doesn't, uh, isn't really a problem with these. Or again, if you're doing something agriculturally, like with manure, no fabrics that's going to seep into if you had some on your butt and then sat in the seat. Okay. 77,291 kilometers there. Honda Auto Reverse Tape Deck. A luxury K car. And then, yeah, some fade on that center console section. Five speed manual. And then headliner has some discoloration in it. Okay. Oh, here's the AS1. I didn't mention that. Okay, not too bad. This is about the same kind of damage you have in the back. So if you're going to do this anyway, you can do that. Okay, we'll conclude here. I think overall I can be pretty happy about the condition of this one. Um, yeah, 1992. I was 10 years old when someone was buying this off the lot. The Super Nintendo era. Super Nintendo just came out in 91, I think. Yeah. All right, that's all for this guy. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you so much for watching, and have a nice day.